Hello everybody, Skin Deep Beauty Vlogger here. I hope you're all really well. Today I have got an affordable empties video. I thought it would be a good way to continue with Discount January because I was looking through the empties that I've accumulated recently and I realised that I'd gotten to 10 empty products that were all affordable ones. And I always like to do my empties videos in sort of sets of 10 products. I feel like it's a reasonable number to review in one video. I feel like I've gained a really good feel for these products because I've used them all up right to the end and so I've got a good idea as to whether I like them or not, whether I'd repurchase them. There's a good mix of skincare, body care and some makeup as well so I'm just going to jump in and start talking about them. And first up is this Radox Nourish Shower Cream which is described as a nurturing blend with shea butter and ginger. And I quite like the packaging of this because you can either sort of stand it in your shower or it flips out and has a hook as well. I picked this up when it was on offer, I can't remember if it was sort of buy one get one half price or I think it was a pound or something like that, it was very affordable um, and I've done a full review on my blog so I'll link that below. This was fine, it was just a sort of cheap shower gel that or shower cream that did the job but it wasn't anything special, I didn't find it to be particularly indulgent to use. The scent was okay, it was kind of um, a slightly fruity scent, um, I didn't find it offensive, it was pleasant but I didn't feel like it had any aromatherapy benefits and I didn't feel that it was a nourishing shower cream, it just had a sort of creamy texture to it but it didn't add any benefits to my skin. Um, it contains sodium lauryl sulfate so if anything I found it to be a little bit drying and definitely needed to moisturise following use. So it was fine, it did the job but I didn't love it and I wouldn't repurchase it. A product that I have repurchased is the Vaseline Spray and Go Body Moisturiser and this is a really clever little um, and this is a really clever little product that as the name suggests you just spray onto your skin and you're good to go and the reason you're good to go is that it's a lightweight moisturiser so it's not going to add much nourishment but it does add a little something to your skin um, and it's very easily absorbed so that's where the go comes from you can get dressed immediately it sinks in doesn't leave a residue on the skin and I really liked this I've mentioned this in a favourites video before and I think it was my November favourites and I mentioned that in terms of the formulation because it's lightweight it's probably better suited to summer use, albeit the fact that it doesn't contain an SPF. However, I really like using this regardless of the time of year because I quite like using a quick body moisturiser or an in-shower body moisturiser in the winter because I don't like standing in my bathroom when it's cold and sort of spending ages rubbing in moisturiser, despite the fact that I probably need something a bit more nourishing in the winter. So what I would do is use this in the mornings and then go in with a more nourishing sort of body butter formula at night. But I really liked this and I have already repurchased it. I've tried both this one, which is the cocoa butter one in the brown packaging, um, and I've also tried the aloe vera one, which comes in a green bottle, um, and has a very fresh scent, but I haven't tried the yellow one, which I think is just an original lotion type fragrance. But I liked that. And actually, considering that it comes in this sort of aerosol can, I tend to think that aerosols finish up quite quickly, but I was surprised at how m long this lasted. It's 190 ml, and it lasts me more than a couple of months for each can, so I think that's pretty good going. Another body moisturiser that I used up, this looks really grotty, um, it was the Palmer's Cocoa Butter Formula with Vitamin E Moisturising Body Oil. This is a really affordable body oil and I just like it. It does leave a residue on the skin and feels quite greasy, but I just think that it's a good affordable body oil to use. The main oil in it is soybean and then it also contains sesame seed oil and safflower seed oil as well as cocoa butter and it does have that sort of signature Palmer's cocoa butter scent so a little bit like chocolate but it's not such a strong scent that it interferes with my perfume I can apply this in the morning and still wear a fragrance and not feel like they're interacting in a horrible way I think I, I like this and the way that I like to use it is to apply it onto my wet skin as soon as I get out of the shower and it really does help to lock in the moisture and again I've already repurchased this because I think for a, just a basic everyday body oil it's really nice. Another way that it's nice to use body oils and it's not to be fair one that I use so much with this but another way that I quite like to use body oils is to mix them in with a cream um, and maybe apply to my legs to add a sheen and just sort of really ramp up and really get those nourishing benefits from both products. 
Okay, apparently I like cocoa butter, and it's not one of those ingredients that I really think about as one that I like, but I've just realised I've got four cocoa butter products in this empties video. So um, I've also used up the Jergens or Jergens, never know how to say that, Naturals Cocoa Butter Body Moisturiser with Vitamin E. I've mentioned before that I think that the these I've mentioned before that I think that these are really, really good affordable body moisturizers. They're some of my favorites. I think that they do the job really well. You don't need to spend more than this. Um, I'm not too sure how much they are, but they're very affordable. And they just do the job. They live up to that natural name. I think they are 96% natural ingredients, it says on the back. Um, I believe the packaging has changed. So this has lasted me quite some time. But yeah, I just like them. They nourish the skin. A reason, I found this to nourish the skin, be easily absorbed, and although it leaves some residue on the skin, it's certainly not heavy or greasy. So I will, so I've repurchased these before, I've mentioned them in my empties videos before, and I will continue to do so because I do think that they are amongst the best moisturizers for your body at the drugstore. Well, seeing as I'm talking about cocoa butter a lot, I will talk about the last cocoa butter product that I used up. And again, this is from Palmer's, but I have to say that I didn't really like this and I wouldn't repurchase it. This is the Palmer's Cocoa Body Scrub. And, I mean, this was fine, it was nice, but the reason I didn't like it was because it lacked that sort of satisfyingly abrasive scrub quality that I really look for in a body scrub. There's a couple of things I want to say about this. Firstly, I think body scrubs are one of those products that if you're going to buy them, just buy them from the drugstore. There's no point in spending more money on them because, I mean, frankly, you can make your own. They're so easy to make. There's no point spending a lot. Unless you want sort of a really indulgent one with sort of essential oils or something like that. However, I tend to avoid those ones, particularly in the summertime, um, because which is because that's when I tend to fake tan and you don't want to use a body scrub that contains essential oils and then apply fake tan because it can interact. This was okay, it would be a good choice for those of you that don't like a body scrub that leaves a residue on the skin. I don't mind either way if they leave a residue on the skin, it, obviously if I'm fake tanning then I prefer that they don't as I just sort of touched upon. This contains cocoa butter, shea butter, vitamin E and natural exfoliating ingredients and as I said I just didn't feel that it was nourishing enough. I still needed to moisturize afterwards, and I didn't like, but the main reason that I wouldn't repurchase this was that I just didn't find it to be a satisfyingly abrasive enough scrub for my personal taste. I really like an intensive scrub. This could be quite a good choice for you if you want to, say, exfoliate summer tanned skin, and you don't want to give a really thorough exfoliation, but you just want to brighten a natural tan, but otherwise, yeah, I'm not too fussed about this. I wouldn't rush out and repurchase it. Next up, I used up a pair of my favorite false lashes. These are the Ardell Natural Style Demi Wispies. And I mean, there's very little point in me showing you the packaging. So I thought it'd be most useful if I just show you a backup pack that I have. I've repurchased these time and time again. I really, really love these. They're my favorite false lashes. And I like them because they just give a very natural, naturally volumized fluttery effect that I really like so that's why I repurchased this and that's why they're my favorites. Apologies if you can hear background noise there is construction going on across the street from where I live so sorry if you can hear annoying crashing and weird noises <laughs> that's what it is. Um, a skincare product that I used up was the Simple Kind to Eyes Eye Makeup Remover and this was a really good basic eye makeup remover. I quite liked using this, say, oops, I quite liked using this, say, if I had done a thorough cleanse with, like, my oil cleanser, which I take sort of over my eyes as well, um, but there was still a little bit of residue left, so then I would go in with this to take off that last remaining bit of eye makeup. I don't use waterproof mascara or products, really, so in that respect, I can't comment on its effectiveness. I prefer a bi-phase eye makeup remover such as the Clarins Instant Eye Makeup Remover because I tend to wear a very heavy smoky eye and I find that to be more effective but as a good basic for just removing everyday eye makeup I think that this is really really good it's a perfectly acceptable product and it's a good price as well it didn't irritate my eyes I wear contact lenses and I didn't have any problems um, it does say that it's effective on waterproof mascara um, yeah, I found the packaging functional as well, it's just a little flip top with a hole in the top. Um, 
it's a good basic eye, eye makeup remover. You could do a lot worse than picking this up. You stop something that do people ever finish these? It's um, an EOS lip balm, and this is in the Summer Fruit one. So this is what they look like when you finally get to the end of them. I really like these. These are amongst my favourite lip balms. I like them because I prefer the texture of these, which is kind of like a, a waxy texture that you would get in a normal lip balm pot. But I don't like normal lip balm pots because I find it unhygienic to be dipping my finger in, especially if I'm out and about, and then applying to the lips. Sometimes I can find the lip balms in tubes to be a little bit greasy and the ones in sticks I can find to be just a bit too buttery and they can sort of melt and squidge down and be a bit messy to use. So that's why I prefer the texture that you get in a pot. The reason I like these is because the texture is akin to those that you find in a pot but normally, and I'm sure you know what these look like because they're very popular, um, it's a sphere of the lip balm and you just sort of apply it directly onto your lips. And I really liked this and it had a nice fruity fragrance that reminded me of those peach sweets that you used to get. I don't know if they're still available, but um, really liked this. They're ridiculously overpriced in the UK. I've seen them up to sort of £7.50, and considering how affordable they are in the US, um, I think that's a bit of a joke. They're just taking advantage of the fact that they're hard to get hold of over here, and it's become a bit of a cult product. But um, if I was going to the US, I would definitely stock up, and I have done in the past, so I have got backups anyway. I've also previously tried the Tangerine one, which is medicated, and really like that too. Finally, I have got two makeup items that I finished up, and the first one is the Rimmel London Wake Me Up Concealer. This is my favourite under eye concealer, regardless of price, whether it's high end or not. I've tried a range of different under eye concealers, and I think this is the best because it's a nice opaque formula, so it really does help to conceal dark circles. Um, it's got a doe foot applicator, um, so pretty easy to just apply and then I dab it into the skin. Um, I don't rub because I don't want to tug the eye area and also don't want to wipe the product away. But very unusual for me to finish up a concealer so I was pleased to do that and I've already repurchased it. I think the best way of me demonstrating how much I like this product is to link below my under eye routine video in which I use this and you can see it being applied. Um, but suffice to say I think it's a really really good product. I would pay double, I think it's that good. And then I also used up the e.l.f. liquid eyeshadow, and this is in the shade Sultry Satin, I think, but it is written in, like, mouse-sized writing, so my eyesight's not great, but I think it's called Sultry Satin. This was a very pretty, um, sort of metallic colour, had doe foot applicator. I liked it, but to be honest, it just dried up. Fair, well, not necessarily fairly quickly, I just have a lot of makeup items and this dried up sort of whilst I was using other ones. I liked it, I thought it had good pigmentation, it was easy to use and I liked the colour. I don't know if I'd rush out and repurchase it, but it was nice and it's very affordable, so I'd recommend it. I can't do a swatch for you because it's dried out. But you know, despite the affordable price tag, didn't irritate my eyes or anything like that, so liked this. And those are all my empties. I do hope that you've enjoyed this. Um, do give it a thumbs up if you have, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.